Princess Bellamzy had a warm welcome at the Los Angeles airport. What shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. Hey, what shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. Hey. We welcome you to Los Angeles. Welcome to the city of angels. Thank you for honoring us and coming. We love you. We love you. And as you're icing somewhere, we set up your name. We welcome you. Thank you for coming. Wow. Wow. Come on, come on. This is nice. We gotta be waiting there. Wow. God bless you. This is nice. Who came up with this shirt? Los wow. Angeles. Thank you. Wow. Los Angeles. Los Angeles in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Look at where Sue and Co. Everybody in the house. Where did they get the money? Let me come. You know that for God, my love is This is strange. Wow. Look at you. Come on, sweetie. God. God bless you. I, I was in front of this. I told Pastor, but I saw all the ladies talking my phone. I said, Pastor, all these people are already there with me. Let me take it out. God bless you, ladies. God bless you, Christiana, my darling. Where's Wesu? Wesu. Looking like a celebrity. <laughs> celebrity. Wait, Andrea. Andrea is here for the camera. Andrea is here camera for you so you can get in the picture. Let me see how I'm doing that job. And Jemez, you can show your face. Show your face. <laughs> wow, everybody's all set. Are you sure this is it? Yeah, it's right here. One. That's it, Sam. Did you see that? Yes. Oh, for real? Yes. Thank you for the advertising.
I'ma say you are the love. You are the love that never leaves. Uh. I am here to testify, Lord. Come on. Of how you took away my shame. Now listen. You made something out of nothing. upon evangelist Princess Balenzi, God has anointed her to preach the gospel to the poor he hath sent her to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to serve at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. No wonder all who come in contact with her, get healed, delivered and blessed. Don't miss yours today. Watch and be blessed. <laughs>
to the Lord. He is wonderful. He's worthy to be praised. We love you, Father. This whole meeting is about you, Jesus. Without you, we cannot do anything. Without you, this gathering is just a waste. You are wonderful. We worship you. We adore you. We love you. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence.
here and always one. That is where we learn everything. That's why you need to be at the program sometimes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I didn't tell you to stop.
can feel the presence of God already in this place. Cry to your father if you have to cry. Speak in tongues. Speak your language. Oh! In the the level
two hands. You have your eyes. You have money in the car. Just say, Father, I thank you. Father, I love you. It could have been worse. It could have been worse.
your head to the Lord. He is wonderful. He's worthy to be praised. We love you, Father. This whole meeting is about you, Jesus. Without you, we cannot do anything. Without you, this gathering is just a waste. You are wonderful. We worship you. We adore you. We love you. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence. Hey! Oh, oh, the presence is so strong in this place. Ah, Jesus is here with us. He's here with us. Oh, no, 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 he said where two or three people are gathered together see when you are two or three gathered together praising him worshiping him like this he says he is there in their midst he said I should tell you that right now he is here with us hey hey Hey! 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm hearing this song. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus just wave your hands thank you Jesus thank you for being here with us thank you for your presence thank you for what you are going to do in this place oh we love you Jesus even for those watching online wave your hand wherever you are you are part of us oh yes Lord don't be too sophisticated for Jesus. Don't be feeling like you are too beautiful for this. Or you are too rich for this. Or you are too elegant for this. Thank you for your presence, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Father, Lord, take over this service today. Take over this service. We can't do it without you. You brought us here. You have a reason why. Let that reason be made manifest today. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Wow. My God. You guys feel something already? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give Jesus a big round of applause. Even the keyboard is Minister Philip. Give Minister Philip a big round of applause. He, he's always busy, but whenever I call him, camera, are you showing Minister Philip? Whenever I call Minister Philip, he's always available for me. Doesn't matter what he's doing. Boom, he clears his schedule. God bless you, man of God. Thank you for always showing up for me. Thank you, sir. It is well with you. Wow. Give yourself a big round of applause. Come on. 
I hope you have shared this video. The ones watching online, is somebody checking online? Are they okay with the sound and video? Everything is fine? You guys don't have any complaints? Hallelujah. We're praying today that everything will go smoothly. And God is doing it for us. Come on now, it's not easy. Give Jesus a round of applause. Most times when we go anywhere, we usually have issues with the network. But today it looks like everything is going well. That's a good sign, right? Hallelujah. I know that what happened in Philadelphia was a small thing compared to what is going to happen here. Amen. I can feel the strong presence of God already in this place. Thank you, Jesus. So my name is Evangelist Princess Belemzi, in case this is your first time coming to this gathering. And I live in Houston, Texas, and I was just in Philadelphia two weeks ago for a program that we did for two days, me, and I invited my cousin, Pastor Isaac Sawal II, to come with me, and it was so powerful. And when I came back, I thought I was done for the year. I actually announced that that was the last program that I will be doing for the year. But you know, with God, you never know. Especially if you work for God, you can't really dictate your schedule. He can just surprise you at any time. He will call you, go here, and you go. And while I was there, I need to tell a little story. The mic guy, can you give me a little volume? My voice is beginning to be strained. Sorry guys, I like it loud, man. don't worry. God will heal your ears when you leave this place. <laughs> so, while I was in Philadelphia, a woman of God that has been watching my video, Reverend Eunice, she came to the program, she helped with the choir, she helped with the praise and worship. And along the line, when I was praying for people that wanted to lose weight, that had the spirit of gluttony, she came out. And I had finished praying for all of them out there. I brought everybody out, like a mass prayer. And normally in a mass prayer, I don't lay hands when I'm done. I tell them to go back. But I heard God tell me, lay hands on each of them. There were like 40 or 50 people. I said, okay. I was touching, touching, touching. And I got to the woman of God, and boom, I felt vibration. And I didn't know she felt the same thing, and she blanked out. And then a demon was manifesting, saying it's a giant demon. He's messed up her life, her ministry, and he's, he put a stone in her belly. He made people hate her. He did so many things because she's been struggling in ministry. You would think that people, um, men of God, women of God, they don't need prayers. You would think that, oh, we have it all going for us. We also need prayers, especially if you're also into deliverance. You cast out demons a lot. The demons, they try to come back and fight. But God is always protecting us. So the demon manifested. And then two days before that day, this woman had almost given up and took medicine to kill herself. Took a lot. And then my call came in. Or my message came in. And God did not let her die. She didn't even have money to come to that program. God used me to give her money to come. She lives in Los Angeles. She flew all the way to Philadelphia the same day of the program for her deliverance. So she prays for her members. They get healed and stuff. But she had problems. You know, and who can help her? The members, they're looking out for themselves. <laughs> she needed someone that God was connected to. And God connected her to me. So after that deliverance, that day, she didn't even know what she was saying. We have it on video. If you watched it, you saw it online. After that deliverance, we raised money for her as the spirit led me. She didn't ask for money. And my, my viewers online and the people there, plus my cousin, Pastor Isaac, he gave her a thousand, I gave her a thousand. I told her not to give it back. She got over $5,000. Where do you see where God delivers somebody and they give you money in that same church? Who does that? Give Jesus a big round of applause for this ministry. It's good to pay attention to the Holy Spirit. You understand? Because there are some people that after you pray for them, God still wants you to help them. It's all by the leading of the Spirit. And once we are led, we do it. So she, she came with nothing. And she went with over $5,000 at the end of the day. She was able to settle her bills and come back looking all fresh and beautiful. If you even see her today, when I introduced her, did you guys know it was the same woman? You saw last week. So looking too far. <laughs> That's how God can transform your life. It's a matter of... See, see, I was a party promoter 
15 years I didn't go to church. In Houston, I was the biggest African party promoter, club promoter. All the club people know me. I did not go to church 15 years. God, I repented in 2015, 2016, God filled with the Holy Ghost. Next day, I heard go online and preach. I said, but I don't know how to preach. All I know is party, party, party. He said, don't worry, I will help you. I didn't go to school. I just came online. I started preaching. Every day since 2016, I've been preaching online. From the party girl, I didn't go to church for 15 years. And people are like, how did he transform her life so much? Because me, I know the true, the, the true and one and only God in heaven. I don't know which God you serve in, but my God is a quick, 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 quick God that transforms people quickly. You know? And I've seen this happen. Most people that come around me, you see their lives change quickly. Because they really come to worship God in spirit and in truth. They're not coming to fake or to pretend. Gone are the days where you just hold Bible, come to church, sit, and go, nothing happens. You come and you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And your life will never be the same. You come loving God. When you love God, all those things you thought you used to love, you would not have interest for them anymore. And before you know, that money you've been chasing over and over, that you've been chasing for so many years, but you couldn't have it. Once you say that money is no longer number one in your life, God is number one. That money will be chasing after you. See, this thing I'm saying, nobody used to like to make money like me. Oh. Woman of God, princess, but let me see, do I look like somebody that likes to be broke? Just look me from head to toe. Can't you tell I like good life? I was hard working. I had all the good skills. I could speak good English, eh? If you want or you go accent. So, so what you gonna do now? You know what I'm saying? I can do anything. I can sell if I can sell you anything. Even something you say you don't want, I will sell it. You will want it by force. By the way, I will present that thing. Even vomit, I will present vomit to look like okra soup to you. That's how good. I'm telling you, I have skills. I am very talented. Have you not wondered how you have so much skills but you still struggle in life? Like, in your company you are number one. Everywhere they are telling you you are good, you are this, you are that. But there is still a struggle. This mic, my voice is going. I need it louder, please. Or maybe, is my mic working now? It's good, but it's, it's training me. You are still struggling, but you are very good. They are all congratulating you. Good job. But you know that where you are in your life, that's the way you're supposed to be. With all the qualities that you possess. Sometimes you even find yourself doing some jobs that you're like, I, I can't believe with everything I know, this is where I'm working now. Because then we didn't have Jesus. He says without him we can't do anything. So even though we think we're doing something, we're really not doing anything. We're just slaving. So me that was struggling in the party world, thinking I was popular. I was quite popular but not the way I am now. And that was for 15 years of working hard. Now look at me. Two years of preaching. I can just do boom. Anywhere I go people will still show. I've gone to Africa. I've gone to Canada. I've gone anywhere I go. And my programs I plan it in a few days. People will still show up. All over the world. It has to be is that not the kind of God you are looking for? Yes. Are you looking for the kind of God that Ah, Father, where are you? Where are you? I can't see you. I've been waiting for you since. You don't even feel anything. You don't even hear his voice. You need the God where you know when he's speaking to you. Like when we were worshipping now. Even Minister Philip, I saw him busting in tongues. God's presence was felt. Mightily. Some people started to cry. Some people started to feel chills. There are some places you walk into, you don't feel God's presence. It's like you just came for a conversation. But here, you will feel his presence. That same God that did this for me, he's ready to transform somebody's life today. So immediately, woman of God's life transformed. And she came to my hotel the next day, and she did a video of just giving her testimony. Even in that video, she looked different from that. See, once you get your deliverance, everything will become clearer. Before you were seeing things in dark, dark, darkness. Things will be brighter. Even your face will start to glow. 
Because before, you will even lose weight. A woman of God has lost weight, sir. She has lost so much weight. She came out for weight loss that day. Is it not weight loss prayer? And people that keep eating, that can't stop eating. Because the demon made her to be eating anyhow. Now she can't even eat again. She will just be depressed, just eating anything she sees. Got her looking fine. Even lose weight more than me, <laughs> <laughs> So she was looking good, things change. And when I took her testimony, I thought that was it between me and her. Because normally, I have prayed for so many people, things have happened. Some men of God, women of God, and I'm done and I move on to the next. But God loves this woman so much. God loves this woman. I kept telling my cousin, don't worry, when he comes on the mic, he'll tell you. God loves, and the way he loves her is the same way he loves you. The same way he loves you. You just have to let him lead you. Then you will understand his love even better. Otherwise, you'll be thinking you are an orphan. You don't have a father, but you do. This woman loves God. She has dedicated her life to serving God, to doing his work. Just because she was attacked by the enemy, it didn't change anything. She was still having her church, doing what she had to do, still staying holy for the Lord. And he came through for her in a not a small way. Like overnight, almost all my followers know her. From a woman that none of my followers knew before. To like, in fact, they know her so much now that today, while I was getting ready, my girl Janelle got a message from somebody that used her name to create a fake page. I said, ah, she has gone to the level where they started using her name to scam people. When you enter that level, you have reached somewhere. For them to use your name, to create a fake page, like they do my name every day, they do my cousin's name, my bishop's name. It means you have arrived. Because people will see that a woman of God just messaged me. Janelle showed me. She said, I don't know why the woman of God is messaging me. I said, Janelle, this is the same message. They sent to my followers. She said, but I check it's her page. I look the page, I said, it has 397 friends. They have requested almost 400 people from her friend list. They did it in one hour. And people were accepted because they thought it was her. That's how they love her already. Give Jesus a big round of applause. You guys don't understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's good to scam people. But for scammers to say, let us now enter this one. It means this one now is beginning to make impact. She's beginning to make impact in people's lives. Hallelujah. <laughs> She's so emotional every time. It is where I'm just telling them that she didn't know about this. This is the first time she's hearing it. It was in my hotel. Is the other camera going to be showing things? Or is it just staying here? Somebody needs to stand on this camera. So that when there's action like this on the stage, you can show things. God bless you, woman of God. You don't have to cry. But this was a woman that last two weeks, she was unknown. She had a strong demon. Two weeks later, she is on a flyer with me and my cousin. Something that we don't do all the time. And scammers are beginning to request people to ask for money in her name. And they are even considering it. Hey! I better give Jesus a big round of applause. That's what I mean about the love of God. This thing is not only her that it can happen to. I've talked about myself. My cousin talks about himself. Bishop talks about himself. A new lady that just started watching. God told her, watch. She's going to tell her story when I invite her here. And she will tell it all. And we will hear it because her story is very inspiring. It will touch somebody to run to God. And I like her because she's so humble. She's willing to say the truth about her life. God is looking for people that are willing to open up and tell the truth. Not to hide things and make things the way they are not. Not to be ashamed of telling the world what he did for you. That's sometimes, that's why you are not receiving. Because God knows that you will not even testify if he does it for you. You will go into the house and hide. This woman has been telling everybody about her deliverance. That day of deliverance was a Sunday. She said, 
She told her members to worship in the house. That she's coming for her deliverance. So there was no... She, her members knew that their pastor needed deliverance. She was not saying, don't worry, I'm going somewhere. She told them, I need to go for my deliverance. So I can be a better pastor too, for you. It's not common to see that. Some people are so arrogant. This whole program is about her. God made me come here because of her. I had no reason to come here. I've already been here in January. I like going to other places that I haven't been to. But God did this to celebrate her. To elevate her. To announce her. To promote her. Sometimes you may be praying to God for so long. Say, Father, why this? You don't know that God is planning something mega. Something big. All you need to do is wait. Wait. And as you are waiting, still hold on tight to him. Don't give up. Because what you're thinking he will do is not what he will do. Where you're thinking the help will come from, it's not where it's going to come from. It's going to come from a place that even if you had to dream deep, you will never imagine. She never knew the woman that God will use to deliver her is the same one that will help her raise money that will still come. Do you know how much I've spent to be here? Over 10000 to be here. I asked her, don't spend any money. Just show up. She said, ah, can, can I do something? I said, don't do anything. Just come. Hey! Where do you see this? This is God! This is how God works. Try to show that he truly loves her. Try to show that all the promises he's made her, he's still going to fulfill them. Because sometimes your life will just be somehow, you'll be like, I guess I was just hearing voices. It really wasn't God speaking to me. I guess all those promises were just in my head. I guess those dreams that I saw were just nightmares or I just imagined them. You begin to say, I don't when God says he will do something for you, he will do it. Just wait for it. It will surely come to pass. What is happening now is something that God has told her before. Maybe years ago, months ago. I don't know, but I'm speaking on behalf of my father in heaven. But I know he has promised her something like this. Because the demon had messed her up in this Los Angeles. Her members, most of them fought her, left her. It wasn't them. It was a spirit. She would pray for them. When I was doing the deliverance on her, if you go watch it, you will hear I asked, the demon said she destroyed his kingdom some years ago. So what happened to her is him coming to fight her. She did deliverance on somebody, one of her members, years ago. And the member doesn't even come to our church again. They don't even like her. But she did not know that that deliverance, she got an attack from it. So you see how pastors will risk your life, their life, to pray for you. Instead of you to appreciate them, you give them a hard time. When they go to sleep or something, they get attacked because of you. The thing that attacked her was not because of her. It was because of somebody that she prayed for that is no longer a member. Are you guys see what I'm saying? And she suffered for years. No one to help her. He shut all the doors. Do you know the devil is so wicked? Everybody, even people that used to help you before. No. Because he wants you to die. But God did not let this one die. After the deliverance, I came back to Houston. But she kept dreaming of me. She said the first dream she had after the deliverance, she saw me. I came to her dream. I was pouring oil on her head. And there was a lot of dandruff on her head, flakes. I was combing it out. Oil in her head. The next day she slept, she saw me again. I came to clean her ear. There was too much earwax in it. And I removed so many. It's not me. It's God using his angels to come. But he's using my face because he led her to me. When God leads you to your destiny helper, you better recognize it. Don't lose it. 
Don't try to lead yourself somewhere else. Stay there. Let him do what or what he sent you there for. Some of you are all over the place. You are everywhere and because of that you are nowhere. You are just everywhere. Everywhere they announce this, you are there. And you don't belong anywhere. Even God will show you dreams of that person that is pushing you to. You ignore the dreams. This woman watched me for almost two years, uh, two months plus before she got her deliverance. She didn't watch me immediately and got delivered immediately. It was weeks. She was patiently watching. She knew one day it would happen. Some people are so impatient. The moment they watch that day and it doesn't happen, oh, there's trouble. They leave. With God, you have to be patient. He doesn't like to be rushed. Don't rush him. Stay where he puts you. If he tells you stay somewhere or do something, while you are there, miraculously he will take care of you. But stay there. Don't think of it, oh, it should be like this instead. Don't do that with God. God is a patient God. And we too must be patient. A lot of people have missed their blessings because they are not patient. But she stayed. She knew that one day it will happen and it happened. So when she kept dreaming of me, I was also dreaming of her. I had a dream and in the dream I came to a place that I have been before to do a program but God did not give me the name of the place so when I woke up I told my cousin I said man of God I, I came to a place that I've been before this year to do a program and I'm asking God so I started to pray when I started to pray my mother was sitting right beside me I heard Los Angeles <laughs> I told my mother, I said, why am I here in Los Angeles as I'm praying? Is it because of Reverend Eunice? I thought I was done with that woman. <laughs> Me, I was getting jealous of her. I said, which kind of love is this now? Ah. You know what I mean? Sometimes we feel like it's only us God loves, but it's not only us. He loves all his children. So my mother was like, ah, you know when you hear it, you do it. I said, no, I need confirmation. And guess what? I went on my Facebook I checked one of my posts that I posted. Had nothing to do with Los Angeles. Somebody just commented, Woman of God, I pray that one day God will bring you back to Los Angeles. From nowhere. The post had nothing to do with Los Angeles. I said, Mommy, Los Angeles. Confirmation of my church. I need another confirmation. My mother was now sitting there. Suddenly, somebody sent her a message. Say, Hi, Mommy. I live in Los Angeles, California. I was just sending you a I say, Los Angeles again. I need another confirmation. God knows his children. He knows how we are with him. Because I, I really didn't want to come. Because I have been here before. A few months ago. I was watching TV. Immediately, I don't know if the person might change to Los Angeles because I'm watching. But I just heard Los Angeles. I said, oh, mommy, this is too much. Ah! My mother was right there. She's, she's watching. She'll, she'll be laughing now on the video. I said, Father, one more confirmation though. Because I didn't want to come here. I felt like I was done with her. But God was not done yet. He still has something to do. And God trusts that I will obey him and do what he plans. See, it's not easy. Even my cousin said it when he came to the room today. He will say it when I give it back. He said, woman of God, it's only you that God could have used to deliver this woman and do what you're doing. Because not only did you deliver her, you gave her money, and now you're spending over 10000 just to come for her to be celebrated. Who would do that? I said, well, <laughs> we are working for God, so whatever he says, it's not our job. But he's right. God knows when that servant will obey. So most likely, that's the one he will go to. Some people will be like, ah, I don't even know this. Super. The first time I had seen her was in Philadelphia. We've never met. She's not related to me. I don't know her. But see, we are related in the spirit. We are of the same father. So she's my sister. Do you understand? We may not be physically related, but in the spirit realm we are. We have the same father in heaven. 
So that night I slept. I was thinking I was going to have a good dream that would say Los Angeles. Because sometimes, you know, our dreams can be so clear, you know. And we're like, oh, I got it. I didn't have no dream. In fact, that night, when I woke, that day I was sleeping because I was so tired from the Philadelphia program. I, in the morning, around 12, I heard somebody hitting like a container with a spoon. Boom, 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 by my ear, my left ear. Like they're playing a drum. It was so loud. I woke up and said, oh, what is this now? And my mother was sitting there because I slept in the living room. My mother was sitting there watching this woman of God on Facebook Live. She was on live video telling her testimony of her deliverance. My mother was watching her and my mother had a small plate where she was eating. And my son was like, mommy, it's, it's grandmother's eating. She's probably the one making the noise. He thought it was the noise from her little plate. But I heard like a drum hitting by my ear. And God told me, he said, go get ready. You're going to be on this woman's video. I said, I'm tired. No, <laughs> I'm still sleepy. I'm... And you know how you're enjoying your sleep and somebody wakes you up? You're not really smiling at that point because you still need some more sleep. So I was already looking at my mother with one eye. Like my mother knows me. What are you eating? Like, no, 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 no. My mother knows me. She did not know that I was mad at her because she didn't know that she was even making noise. She wasn't really the one. So I said, what are you watching? She said, she's watching the woman of God. She's giving her testimony. God said, share this video now. I said, but I don't want to watch now. If I share, I just grudgingly <clears throat> shared on my wall. He said, go get ready. You will be on the video. I went into the bathroom. I heard it. I said, daddy, I'm still sleepy. I'm still tired. <laughs> he said, enter the video now. I entered I said, hello, woman of God. She said, hey, my mommy. Woman of God is here. God bless you, woman of God. Today, you will, you will come and bless us. Oh. God told me I will be on that video. It's on Facebook what I'm saying. He said, I told you you will be on this video. He woke me up to be on her video. That noise was not my mother. It was God that woke me up. Because the way I was sleeping, I was sleeping so deep. You, you needed that kind of noise to wake me up. I was in another place. So I was like, ah, I'm not even taking a shower, nothing. I said, okay, let me get ready, quick. The moment I wore my fine wig, human hair, not this one, another one. The moment I put the wig on, because my hair is short like a guy's hair. I don't have hair. As I finished putting the wig, balancing it right, Remove my hand. She said, Woman of God, we are ready. Are you ready? I said, This woman watching me with something. How did she know I'm ready? <laughs> this is serious. So. This woman, eh? This woman, I told my cousin, I said, This woman is a woman of the spirit. I have so much to say about her. This is about this woman. My God. I said, I said, What is this? You know? So I entered the video. Anyone that watched that video, look at my eye very well. You would know that this woman just woke up. I didn't... You know, I'm always fine, no? You know what I mean? Whether I wear makeup or not. But that day, my face did not look like someone like that. So while I was talking... She was on the video, she was talking a testimony, playing a recording of how she took a lot of pills and almost died and did a recording of her telling people that she loves them and all those kind of stuff because she thought she was going to go that night. God says you said you needed another confirmation. This is it. You will go to Los Angeles. This was on Saturday last week or Sunday and you will go soon. Not next year. Next week. So I was looking at the calendar on my phone when she was talking on my other phone. She didn't know I was God was talking to me. I said, okay, Father, I will. Because he had given me like four confirmations the day before. And I kept wanting more. So he made this grand. He, he put me in her video on Facebook Live. I'm not usually on anyone's videos. Even my cousin, Pastor Isaac, has never put me on his video. Pastor, why? He <laughs> did Pastor, why? Pamela, why? Today that I'm not usually on people's videos. If you follow me, you know this thing. That was a bigger confirmation. 
So I announced that I'm coming here. And I told them, I said, this is really for you. God wants to honor you. God wants to announce you. God wants to bless you. God wants to use you mightily. God wants to take you to another level. And she was almost crying on the video because it was just too much. She was still testifying about the deliverance and the money raised. And now she's hearing that a program is coming to her own city. And she will also be on the flyer with the woman of God that she's been waiting for weeks to deliver her. Hey! It was like a dream. And then I'm telling her, don't worry, I got it all. I will pay for everything. She said, I said, don't worry. I got this. Even food. She said she will cook for me. I said, don't worry. She said, I have to do something. I can't just... See, when God starts to bless you, eh? It will, like, it will be like embarrassment. It will just be coming from everywhere. <laughs> and it's not really based on your own effort. Though. It will just be coming from left, front, right, center, everywhere. Relax and see me work in your life. This is how God blesses people. And we are here now. And the whole world is watching. I have an online ministry. Right now we have thousands of people watching. All of but I came and I brought my cousin along. My cousin said, woman of God, I'm just coming to support you. You know this program is about the lady but I'm coming to support you. They even gave me a very nice welcome at the airport with some flowers. They did good. And they kept telling me to hold the flower. I said, ah, will I chop this flower? Will I eat this flower? I have taken picture already. Now. <laughs> you know we Nigerian people. <laughs> Is it vegetable that we used to cook to? <laughs> I was telling them, I said, we African. Let's say I'm married and my husband is doing, what do they do, honeymoon or valentine? And I'm expecting one beautiful gift. And they bring flower. Honey, I love you so much. This is a flower. I said, okay, thank you. Where, where is the gift? <laughs> Americans, when they see the flower, oh my God, you bought me flowers. Oh, I love you, baby. <laughs> oh, I love you. <laughs> Nigerians, oh yeah, I don't see the flower. Where the gift? Where the gift? We are not that, you know, we are different. Or if you come and you do roses, you want to do a, a romantic dinner, you put rose all over the floor with your husband or your wife, not your boyfriend or girlfriend, oh, please, before you guys can do this. Nigerian man will enter. The woman will say, honey. I made a romantic candlelight dinner with roses. The first of all, the man will say, candlelight. I beg, turn on the light. Why are you taking me back to Africa where we don't have light? <laughs> I reject this life. Turn on all the light. <laughs> turn off that candle. <laughs> Do you know how we suffered in, whole, in, in Nigeria? We had no electricity for years. What, how is, what is romantic about no light? <laughs> and then he will look at the floor and he say, who will sweep all these things now? All these roses you pour on the floor. Who will clean this thing? <laughs> we just don't know. We just don't know. I'm trying to make you guys. You know I like to make you guys laugh. But overall, I really appreciated it. I've been feeling so good since I came here. I woke up yesterday telling Pastor. I said, Pastor, I'm so happy today. I took a picture and I put, I am so joyful today. Because I had to fast for some days before this. And God just keeps revealing to me. I even had a quiz in my dream a few days ago. And the number one answer to the quiz was her name. I told her, I said, God loves you. God is about to do something that will blow your mind. Like seriously, this is like beyond what I've ever seen in my life. So when I came yesterday, I was all happy, feeling good. Last night I was praying. I had an encounter with God. Today I woke up and God told me, just relax. Everything will be all right today. Don't push anything. Just go with my flow. And it's already going. I didn't know I would start talking about her in the beginning. But after the worship, I was led to talk about her. What does that tell you? It tells you that it's about her. I thought there would be another process, but I never really planned these things. I just come hold the mic. 
Even though we were starting a little late, he said, just relax. It will be okay. So give Jesus a big round of applause for what he's doing in a woman of God's life. I'm going to invite her on stage now because the atmosphere is set for her. So she can tell us a little bit about her story and whatever God is leading her to say. She's going to come back again later. But let her, let her share her testimony with us. It will inspire somebody. There could be somebody in this room here that is thinking that God has forgotten them or that is thinking of them. for me thank you so much past uh, what's his name again bro jerry he did good while you were talking i wanted keyboard to support i like keyboard but i need philip now god bless all of you did you enjoy that i don't know why she stopped i was enjoying it and while she was talking i started to oh this mic is not clear can you make it clear there's like <laughs> Can you clear it for me, please? Make it sharp like yours. Thank you so much. Do you guys hear me? There's like a wind. Okay, on this one, just give me volume. I just like working with the same people. They know how I like stuff, but when you go somewhere, you have to work with what you have. It is well. Hallelujah! While I sat down with Pastor Isaac Samuel II, and I was watching the woman of God, Philip, please don't leave me again. Thank you. Keyboard there, I have to flow. you clapping please fix my mic he's like he's dancing over there <laughs> i said look at how beautiful she looks people online were commenting wow she looks so pretty i say is this how god celebrates people do you know this is a short notice program like it's like we were just talking about it five six days ago and we are here. I don't even have followers like that in Los Angeles. Even the last time I came to Los Angeles, people travel from everywhere. A bunch of you here flew from somewhere to here. But we have thousands of people online watching. All over the world. And God is giving us great quality. Because he's about to announce her.
Eunice to pray for me that I want to make it to California. And she prayed. And God made a way. And I'm flying to California. Did you not say that? Yes, I said it. Yes, I said it. Go ahead. So she's, go ahead, sweetie, go sit down. So she's celebrating me, telling people how, but God is still sending people to her. See, if you are thinking that, oh, I have to do it that way, if not, I will lose everyone. You will lose them. Because it is God that sends people your way. And he is the one that honors your words, your prayers. When she was giving her testimony, I was like, hmm. I did like I did not hear it, but I did. And God honored it. working for myself or am I working for God sometimes some people God will direct them here but that's not their final destination God may connect them to their final destination through this place some of them came through me but when they saw Bishop God told them that's your prophet but you had to go through her so you can meet him. They saw Pastor Isaac and they say, That's your prophet. But you had to go through her so you can meet him. Some people watching me, God is preparing them for their woman of God. When she came, God will say, That's your woman of God. I was just preparing you for you to meet her. And me, God will even bless me more for my. Even some people you don't expect are watching and they are learning. What's the use of being in ministry when you are suffering and struggling? Who are you pretending to? I did not even know she called Obama's office. I'm hearing all those stories for the first time today. It was that bad. She involved some officials. In high places. I had no idea of that part of her story. But do you see how God has turned around her life? In like a week after her deliverance. It's like restoration. Faster than she expected. There was a time she messaged me. Was it before the deliverance? Two days before the deliverance or three days. She said, nobody is calling her for a job.
Nobody wants. I say maybe God. I anointing me, but I didn't know how I'm going to tell her. I said, Let me not say it. they will say, Is it only you? Eh? Now you want to come fight. They have delivered you, giving you money. Now they have announced you. Now you're talking about anointing. I saw it in my dream. I saw her anointing me, and a pastor Isaac too was standing there. Hallelujah. Are you guys? Ready? I saw it. So two days God ago. Is, God is telling me something. He's confirming it by yes. showing it to her. Hallelujah. God bless you, man of God. I told him, I said, God wants me to anoint her so the angel of world can visit her. So she can do it like we do it. Because God wants to take her places. Do you know what it means? Two weeks ago, I was in Philadelphia. I spent... Almost 30,000. Because all my workers... God told me that she will be anointed for angel of world. And she will do this full time because he's going to use her mightily. There's no way your woman of God or man of God can have an, an eight hours job and still be praying for you, traveling. It's impossible. You can't do that. We'll be so tired when we come back from work. When you're calling us, messaging us. How can we do it? We are thinking of our next shift tomorrow. It's grace. And this woman is humble. God grieves grace to the humble. He lifts them up. I even saw an amount that I'm supposed to give her at the end of this program. I heard it over and over. I kept hearing $4,000. $4,000. I told you, right? I heard it $4,000 for the two days. Give her 4,000. But it, 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 it was just, the, the amount stood out in my dream. Four, I was telling Pastor Isaac, his camera is showing her, she's crying. It's my camera people, are they focusing on? Woman of God. That one, nobody's holding it.
I said, I just spent 27 to 30,000 two weeks ago. I'm here. I've already spent over 10,000. At the end of the event, I'll probably spend another 10,000. In two weeks, almost 40,000 something. And this is all I do. I was calculating how much I've spent in all the programs this year. We've done about 15, almost $400,000. I said, Lord, how did I get all this? I have never seen this kind of money in my life before. When I used to work, do this, work hard, do this, do that. Everything with all the skills. Hey, I was still living on overdraft. Do you know how? You borrow money from your bank. You use it when your paycheck comes. Boom. The thing takes it. You always see red in your account. But you're a fine girl. <laughs> you have Snapchat. You have Instagram. You have Facebook. You're like, I'm blessed. How? You're like, oh, I'm a queen. I'm this. That's what's up. You are deceiving yourself. You are struggling. People always feel like when we come close to God, our life ends. They feel like poverty starts. When we come close to God, that's when your life begins. That's when you receive grace to succeed. Without working as hard as you used to. Before you were just working hard, 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 hard work. But nothing to show for it. Now you are being led to work. And you have so much to show. You're not going into the places you're not. Oh, I don't want people are watching. That is a demon. It's a spirit. It's a spirit that needs to leave. Who cares who's watching? Do they know how you cry at night? Do they know how you think of how you will pay your bills daily? Do they know how you are in pain daily? How you are suffering daily? On your own in your house with nobody to console you? Who cares what they think? God likes it when we can be open. When we're not ashamed to tell people what he has done for us. Some people, your healing is still on a standstill. Because God knows that you are not going to celebrate the healing when it happens. So, he's going to somebody that is ready to shout it out. 